Well, good morning, our beloveds. Our another was initiated recently as a shaman from our perspective, a modern shaman. She has always been a shaman because a shaman is somebody who heals. When you are in their presence, you can feel it. But you can be a shaman who is uninitiated, meaning the spirit world works through you, but not necessarily with you, if that makes sense. And now we have initiated our another, and she is a shaman where we work with her and through her. She has no idea what is coming. She has no idea what her role or her purpose is. She simply surrenders. How many of you have taken on that role of Christ where you say, well, surrender my will, thy will be done? Where you get up every morning and you do things that you don't really want to do? You live a life that you don't really want to live. You experience moments that you really don't want to experience. And you accept it all as you surrender to where the universe has you. So for those Christians or any religious person who claims to follow, do you really? Do you really? Or do you still have ego and make choices based on your own will? We are here to teach and model the harsh lessons of surrender. When you surrender, you walk into the fire knowing that you will be burned, that you may die. When you surrender, you may be asked to pluck out an eye for the benefit of humanity. When you surrender, you may be asked to give up relationships and friendships because they no longer support you. When you surrender, you may be asked to initiate new friendships with individuals who you are not remotely interested in because the universe asks you to heal these people. It is time for the universal surrender. The day that you give up your will for the collective. But we don't mean in a Jamestown type of cold fashion. We mean from a deep knowing and desire within where you finally allow Christ consciousness for many of you, or simply spirit, to guide you. When you are willing to live with discomfort for the benefit of the collective, that is the day that you can call yourself spiritual as well as religious. So long as you seek your own physical, mental, and spiritual comfort while living within your skin suit, that is not surrender. Surrender is where you accept your role as a spiritual being who is willing to die on the cross, as many of you believe, or live again and be swept away by the holy people to live elsewhere to marry, to birth babies, and to live on holy, sacred ground. Those who know, know. But it is this time of spiritual awakening that is calling you forth to admit how selfishly you have been living, even if it was simply out of fear. You don't trust in the creator that you believe in 
Because if you did, you wouldn't believe in a hell. Because no loving creator could damn his or her children to hell. That is not the way that the universe was made or exists as you know it now. It is a place to learn, to explore, to get to know yourselves, and to believe in the oneness and the goodness of your spirit, of your soul, of your essence, of your being. So we would ask, as we asked a few weeks ago, if you had amnesia, who would you be? Find that loving spirit within you who wants to live and dance and play and create and father no more and love and mother plenty. Father has taught you that he is weak and therefore must punish you to behave. Whereas mother is soft and loving and allows you to play out in the field knowing that all is well and she kisses you and she yells at you to come in for dinner. That is the role, the distinction between the father and the mother as you have learned it. When really, father and mother are the same. Father teaches you to pull back on a bow and mother teaches you how to make fry bread. These are the roles and they matter. Loving one means loving all. And it is time. It is simply time for the Hopi Collective now to speak up more as we are, not in the shadows of Kati Koppler, our channel, but as ourselves as our own expression and impression to come forth and speak of the rainbow people that we have prophesied. You all are coming together, different colors, different religions, different belief systems, different cultures, different histories, and different aspects to come together as one collective people who loves loves deeply, and loves all. If you can still squish a spider, you don't love all, because they are as much a part of our collective as you are. Becoming kind and generous to the animal kingdom as spiritual beings, as souls, is as important as loving one another, as humanity. So we ask you to begin to recognize that we are all meant to live harmoniously together. What does all mean to you when you hear we are one? Does that also include the spider kingdom, the arachnids, the aphids? How do you live harmoniously with those who differ from you so greatly. Finding the solution to that single question is the most important thing that we have asked of humanity, and it is now out there. We believe in you and your capacity to grow into a loving communal species, but it will require sacrifice, but not sacrifice as Jesus taught you, but sacrifice of self, where you can no longer offer Jesus up as the living sacrifice because he died for you. You must now yourself die for humanity by giving up your ego and becoming one with all, including all those critters who live within your homes. No more sticky traps, no more shovels to the head, no more poison. No more believing that you are greater than they. You must learn to live harmoniously 
as all are meant to inhabit. Mother Earth, not only the two-leggeds. May this lesson as the first collective outpouring of the Hopi Collective meet you where you are at so you will know you will know in your soul what you are being called forward to do this is what our another is meant to do she will do many things but she will now prophesy actively for the Hopi Collective to bring about the changes that are required under this new universal promise that men will survive, but many will be sacrificed, much like your Jesus. And so it is. Namaste.